6.4 Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Theorem 4 is the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1. If f is continuous on a to b, then the function f of x is equal to the integral of uh, f of t from a to x dt. So the capital F indicates that we have taken the integral of f of x. So if you have lowercase f, that's the original function. If you have uppercase f, then that means we got the function from doing the integral. This has a derivative at every point x in a to b and the derivative of f is equal to the derivative of the integral and that's equal to the original function. In other words, the derivative of the integral, they undo each other and this will just be f of x. Just like if you had uh, x plus 2 minus 2, that's just x because plus 2 and minus 2 are inverse operations. The square root of x squared is x, it's actually absolute value of x, but uh, they undo each other also. Those are inverse operations. Well, derivative and integral are inverse operations, so all you have left is f of x when you do both. So we're saying the derivative of the integral is f of x. Well, let's take a look at something like this, and, and let's do it this the long way. What if we actually took the integral and then took the derivative? Well, let's take the integral. The integral of 3t squared is t to the third, and then we'd have plus 4t, and we'd integrate from negative 1 to x, and remember we're going to take the derivative of this when we're done. This is equal to the derivative of, we would have x to the third plus 4x, that's how the t's are going to change to x's, and then we're going to minus, let's see, what are we going to minus? Negative 1 minus 4, so negative 1 minus 4. Uh, now we're going to take the derivative of x to the third plus 4x and actually plus 5. And the derivative of this is 3x squared plus 4. See how you get right back to where you started? So when you take the integral and then you take the derivative, you just really, t's get replaced with x's. Now the reason they get replaced is because of this operation right here. Well I'm not going to do the same thing with this one because uh, the integral and the derivative are just going to undo each other. The answer to this, since the bottom is a constant and the top is a variable, is just simply x plus 6. Now we could go through this whole process and see how uh, the constant is going to, when you take the derivative of the constant, it's going to be 0. So there's really no need to go through this whole process. It's just going to be x plus 6. If we have the derivative from 2 to x of the square root of t squared plus 5, the derivative of the integral, they undo each other. But when we would do the process for the integral, we would plug x in for t. So the answer is just square root of x squared plus 5. And that's it. Variable lower limits of integration. Find dy dx. Well, what if the x is down here? Uh, if we did the integral, we'd have the constant minus the variables. Now, then when we uh, take the derivative, uh, it's just going to be a negative of the variables. In other words, we could say, well, this is equal to the negative 5 to x of 3t sine t dt. Uh, and then the derivative of the integral would just be negative 3t not t's because we'd replace the t's, negative 3x sine of x. Constructing a function with a given derivative and value. Find a function y equals f of x with the derivative that is tangent that satisfies the condition f of 3 equals 5. Well if we have y equals the integral from 3 to x of the tangent of t dt and then plus 5, that gets everything that's asked. First of all, the derivative would be tangent of x, and the derivative of 5 would be 0. So this function has a derivative that is tangent. And if I plug 3 into this function, and for the x, we get 5. Because if you integrate from 3 to 3, the, all of this is 0, and then 0 plus 5 gives you the 5. So the trick is, whatever this value is right here, that becomes your lower limit, and then x is your upper limit. Fundamental Theorem Part 2. 
Theorem 4 continued. The fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. If f is continuous at every point of AB, and if f is any antiderivative of f on AB, then if you integrate from A to B of f of x, you take the integral, plug in the top number, and then minus, always minus, that's always minus, the integral with the bottom number plugged in. This part of the fundamental theorem is also called the integral evaluation theorem. Evaluating an integral. So let's evaluate this integral. The integral of x to the third is 1 fourth x to the fourth, and then plus x, and we're evaluating from negative 1 to 3. So we're going to plug 3 into here. We have 81 over 4 plus 3, and then minus, we have negative 1 fourth minus 1. Well, 81 fourths minus actually plus 1 fourth is 82 fourths. And then we have 3 plus 1 is plus 4. Uh, we have uh, 82 fourths plus 16 fourths, and we'll be able to reduce this. We have 98 over 4, which is, uh, let's see, 4. Does that, is that nice? Uh, that's not nice, so let's just reduce. Let's go um, 49 over 2. Example 6, finding area using antiderivatives. Find the area of the region between the curve y equals 4 minus x squared from 0 to 3 and the x-axis. If we take a, just graph this, we have a y-intercept of 4, and then the zeros are negative 2 and 2. So this parabola goes down to here, and it's down somewhere here at negative 3, and it goes through 0 right there at negative 2, and then down here at positive 3. So we're trying to find the area of the region between the curves. So we want this area right here underneath the parabola, and then we want this area right here, which is actually above the parabola. Well, we have to keep in mind that if we did the integral from 0 to 3 of 4 minus x squared dx, this would give us uh, the net area, which means this area right here uh, from 0 to 2, this area would be positive, and then from 2 to 3, this area would be negative. And this integral would take into account that this would be positive area and this would be negative area, but we want the total area. We want the area between the curve and the x-axis. Now we have to split this over the zero because we have positive area to the left of two and negative area to the right of two. So we're going to integrate from zero to two of four minus x squared dx. We're going to take the absolute value of that. Now even though we know that the area is positive, if we do absolute value, then we'll guarantee that we use a positive value. And then we'll add that to the integral from two to three of four minus x squared dx. And then we'll take the absolute value of this to find the total area uh, that we have between the curve and the x-axis. Well, the integral is, for both of them actually, is 4x minus 1 third x to the third. And we'll integrate from 0 to 2, and then we'll add that to 4x minus 1 third x to the third from 2 to 3, and then we'll make sure that we count all of this area as positive. So here we have 8 minus 8 thirds, and then minus 0, we don't have to worry about that, absolute value, then plus we have 12 minus, uh, let's see, we got 27 thirds, which is 9, and then minus, plug a 2 into this, this is 8 minus 8 thirds, and we'll take the absolute value of this answer also. We have 24 thirds minus 8 thirds is 16 thirds, absolute value, and then plus, absolute value of, let's see, 12 minus 9 is 3, minus 8, that's negative 5, and then plus 8 thirds. Uh, we have negative 15 thirds plus 8 thirds, we have negative 7 thirds. So we need 16 thirds plus 7 thirds is uh, going to be 23 thirds. Find the total area between the curve f of x and the x-axis from 0 to 4. So let's find out where the graph crosses the x-axis in between 0 and 4. We can factor out an x squared. 
So we have really 0 equals x squared times. We have x minus 3, and then we have minus, and we have x minus 3. So we're going to factor by grouping. Well, now we have x squared minus 1 times x minus 3, and that's equal to 0. The zeros are plus or minus 1, and then x is also equal to 3. We have two values between 0 and 4, 1 and 3, where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now we're going to set up our integral. We're going to integrate from 0 to 1 of the function of f of x, dx. And then we're going to take the absolute value of that. So in case it's negative, then we'll, we're going to create, we're going to make everything positive. Then we have plus the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x dx. Absolute value of that as well. And then finally, we have the absolute value of the integral from 3 to 4 of f of x. Now the nice part about this is the integral is going to be the same for all three. So let's find the integral. We have uh, x to the fourth, min uh, one fourth of that, of course. So one fourth x to the fourth, minus x to the third, minus one half x squared, and then plus three x. So there's the integral. And we're gonna evaluate this integral for first of all from zero to one. So now we're evaluating uh, capital F of x. That's the integral. And when we plug one in, we get uh, one fourth, minus 1, minus 1 half, and then plus 3. And that's equal to 7 fourths. Then, uh, well, that's positive. The absolute value of 7 fourths is 7 fourths. Uh, then we'll, we'll evaluate uh, the integral from 1 to 3. And that's gonna, we're going to plug a 3 in, and then we're going to plug a 1 in. We have uh, 81 over 4 minus 27, minus 9 halves, plus 9, and then minus, when we plug a 1 in, we get uh, 1 fourth, well, yeah, uh, we already know that, don't we? We already know that it's 7 fourths, because when we plugged in 0, it didn't really uh, change the what we got when we plugged 1 in. And that is equal to negative 4, and remember we're taking the absolute value of this, so when we take the absolute value, we get 4. And then on the last one, we're going to evaluate the antiderivative from 3 to 4. Well, now we need to evaluate the antiderivative from 3 to 4. So let's plug 4 into the antiderivative, which is going to be 4 to the 4th over 4. That's actually 4 to the 3rd. That's 64. Minus 4 to the 3rd. That's 64. And then we have minus 16 halves is 8, and then plus 12. And then we need to minus, uh, plug 3 in, we have 81 over 4, minus 27, minus 9 halves, and then plus 9. And that's equal to 25 fourths. Well, now we need to add these three together. We have 7 fourths, then we have plus 16 fourths, which is 4, and then plus 25 fourths. 7 plus 16, that's 23, and then we have 48 fourths, 48 fourths, which is a total of 12.